steam engines. Ah, what a glorious beast. Chugga, 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 if you will. And yet they always have had one glaring weakness. One, one minor issue in terms of managing them. They had success, obviously, great success over the years, but were eventually replaced by diesels. And why, gentlemen? Why? Well, of course, we had to get rid of all those dastardly steam engines. But why, though? Well, there were efficiency differences between diesels and steam engines, and one of the more glaring ones, one where the diesels absolutely did win out over the steam engines, and it just can't be argued, is startup time. Diesels don't take nearly as long as steam engines do to actually start, because they don't need to heat water in order to function. You can start a diesel locomotive in under an hour, minutes, generally speaking. It depends on a lot of factors. It varies. You can't necessarily start them immediately, but they don't take very long. Just minutes, like I said. Steam engines take hours. <laughs> hours. If you've ever boiled water, imagine doing that, but doing, like, a lot of boiling of water. Like, a lot of water, because they have a lot of water. In order to actually build up the pressure and get up the steam, it can take a decent amount of time, and it varies quite a bit depending on the size of the steam engine. Smaller ones may take three, four hours. Bigger ones can take a day. And it was one of the major driving forces behind utilizing diesels over them because they didn't necessarily have to, you know, have someone start the fire hours and hours and hours before the engine was actually ready to move. Granted, steam engines in common uses didn't necessarily take that long to start because they had just been used, their components were still warm. So starting them again could take under an hour, give or take, again, depending on the size of the engine. There, there are a lot of factors here, but the point is, steam engines don't start on a dime. They don't. They just don't. They take time. But some people sought to correct this problem via a new creation, the Velox Boiler. Behold the power of the Velox. A Velox Boiler is a turbocharged force circulation water tube boiler, which utilizes an axial flow compressor and a gas turbine in order to function. The principle behind the Velox boiler is the utilization of combustion under pressure with very high gas velocities utilizing the turbine. It accomplished a handful of things. For one thing, Velox boilers could actually be a lot smaller than traditional fire tube boilers. But more intrinsically, they could start up a lot quicker. You could start a Velox in about 15 to 20 minutes, which is pretty phenomenal for anything utilizing steam. The Velox boilers were developed in 1931 by the Brown Bavaria Company, BBC. Not, 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 not that BBC, the BBC of Switzerland. A group of electrical engineering companies that did come up with the new boilers, and their intent was actually industrial applications for electricity generation. And in that category, Velox boilers were actually very good. In fact, they would lead directly to the development of traditional gas turbine power stations. Again, for electricity generation. So, all in all, not, not a bad showing, but naturally, some people had the idea, well, what if we put this in a vehicle? I mean, we have steam-powered vehicles. We, we, could, we, we, we could put the one in a locomotive or a ship, and, and that'll work, right? Well, no, not, not, not really. They did. They, they tried. They did. But putting one in a vehicle was not the same thing as a static power station. It was a different kind of situation. They were a bit better in ships, but never had any widespread use there. And the one time that I know they tried it in a locomotive, it went really, really, really badly. Like, it was... Awful. The French decided to try this, because of course they did, and it was a modification, a reconstruction of an existing 460 locomotive performed by the Paris, Lyons, and Mediterranean Railway, 
she, first of all, didn't even look like a steam engine at face value, though you could tell from the drivers. But she was a cab forward, which was interesting. She operated under a boiler pressure of 290 pounds per square inch, fairly high in those days, and was a four-cylinder compound design. She used Walshart's ever-reliable valve gear, and again, the intent was to limit startup time. They wanted an engine they could start up pretty quickly, and yeah, yeah, you know, she did. Okay, that's great, that's wonderful. But a Velox boiler requires a lot of other equipment in order to actually function properly. A lot of other equipment you can't actually fit on a steam engine very effectively without making the whole thing an absolute Christmas nightmare. In a static setup at a power station, this isn't a problem because you're, it's, it's static. But actually putting all this on a locomotive is an entirely different situation. A lot of the stuff Velox is required to function were already present at power stations for one reason or another, so that wasn't a big deal. And while the boiler itself wasn't very large, the other auxiliary equipment made things a bit convoluted in the essence of a moving object. And, more intrinsically, if any one of these things failed, it would mean that the locomotive would not be able to function whatsoever. See, under the Prelox principle, it uses a lot of compressed air. The idea is that the pressure in the combustion chamber is about 35 pounds per square inch, which increases the air density and makes more oxygen available for combustion, which allows for a higher firing rate, which is good. It also doesn't use a tremendous amount of water at a time, meaning that you could raise steam very quickly because there was only so much water to heat, at least at first. But that requires the air to be compressed. So, for starting, already, she needed an auxiliary diesel electric generator, which likely also needed an electric starter motor and a battery. So wait, it's a steam engine, but it needs a diesel generator to operate. Okay, all right, I already we're off to a great start. And then there was the gas turbine, which was the normal part of the Velox system, and that drove the air compressor, which was coupled to a steam turbine for assistance and speed regulation. Oh, and that also had an electric starting motor. There was also another steam turbine. Yes, there were two steam turbines, meaning there were three total turbines in one engine, and that was to drive the water circulation and the fuel oil pumps. That was coupled to yet another electric starting motor. For some reason, actually, why is that? Because steam turbines don't need an electric starter. Why would you need it? I, 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 don't, I don't even know. And she had at least two different feed water heaters. One was heated by the combustion gases and the other was by the exhaust from the steam turbines. And to make the whole design even more insane, she was equipped with corridors within the streamlined casing. That meant that her crew could actually inspect her machinery while she was moving, which, I mean, I guess that's kind of a neat feature, but also, yeah, great. All right, that's, that's a lot. The starting procedure of this thing was, well, first you start the diesel generating set, so you start a diesel. You see why diesels were chosen now? I... <laughs> that would be the... That that would be the only step <laughs> in a diesel. <laughs> anyway, but for the Velox boiler, you start the diesel generator, then you use the electricity from that to start the two auxiliary turbine groups. Then... You use electricity to preheat fuel and start combustion. You would at some point have to change over to the regular fuel oil supply because you're not using the stuff the diesel generator is using, presumably. And then the steam turbines would eventually take over from the electric starting motors. It was bizarre, convoluted, confusing, and maintenance would have had to be an insane, obnoxious nightmare. There's no reason for any of this! Like, what are you doing? Like, wait, 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 guys, you, you can't, you can only add so much stuff to a thing before it becomes woefully ridiculous. Like, this is, this is absurd. True, she did start up a lot quicker than other steam engines. That is, that is absolutely correct. But, but at what cost? And the cost is a mess that required a hilarious maintenance ethos that only made everyone involved ridiculously angry to have to manage her. And, um, yeah, this design was not repeated. I mean, Velox boilers were. They, again, were used in stationary applications. But in terms of mounting them on a vehicle, it just wasn't feasible. 
you had to have too much extra stuff to put it on wheels, to have to manage it, to have to deal with all, all of this. No, we're not doing that today, or ever. And sources aren't clear whatever happened to this locomotive exactly, but given the time she was built... Well, she was constructed in 1937, in France. Yeah. Oh. Oh, we are the Panzer Elite born to compete. Right. Prior to the start of the Second World War, they did use her as an express passenger locomotive. But once the war started and by the end of it, she was gone. So it's likely that under German occupation, they took one look at this thing and were like, Hans, get the Flammenwerfer. Like, what? And to be fair, the French would have probably done the same thing at some point because no I mean it was an interesting experiment an interesting attempt but it just didn't work for a steam engine unfortunately and thus she has been lost to time and until next time this is darkness and I bid you all a fun farewell <laughs>